Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I like to make clothes here on YouTube and talk about thrifting and fashion. So make sure you subscribe if you like those kinds of videos. I would love to have you here. So earlier this month, I hinted at a knitting mittens video and you guys have been asking me for that video ever since I said that. So here it is. And like my other videos, this video is going to be timestamped, so you can come back to this video anytime and find the certain section that you want to work on. But yeah, other than that, I think we should just get started. So these are all the materials that I'll be using for the mittens. For needles, I'm going to use a US 15 or 10 millimeter needle. It's a 22 inch cord. The size of the cord doesn't matter too much. You just want it to be longer than like the circumference of your mitten. If it's too long, then it will kind of get in the way. And then for the ribbing, I'm going to size down. I'm going to use a US 11. And the reason why I size down on ribbing is because the tension can get a little bit weird when you're doing ribbing. So sizing down can make it look a little bit neater. And then for yarn, I'm going to use this Malabrigo Rost yarn. And the color is Matisse Blue. So this is 90 yards and it should make a full pair of mittens. Any size 6 or super bulky yarn will work. I've been really liking the Toby Udon yarn and this one comes with a little bit more than the roster yarn does and then this is a more affordable option the wool ease lion brand yarn that you can find at Joann's or Michael's so those are a few yarn recommendations I'll link a few more down below then you're gonna need some stitch markers I would have at least three a tapestry needle to weave in your ends and then also put in your scrap yarn and then a piece of scrap yarn you don't need much some scissors these two are optional but i always recommend having a tape measure and then a notebook to write little notes down i'm going to change these to the us 11 needles so we're going to start with the cuff and pretty much for this whole project we'll be using something called the magic loop method which if you've never heard of it it's a method where your cord is a lot longer than the circumference of your work. Think of like smaller projects like socks or mittens, obviously. This is an alternative method to knitting in the round with a smaller piece rather than using like DPNs. I honestly don't have much experience with DPNs, but I always prefer working with a cord. So that's how I'm going to do it. But for the magic loop, essentially what you're doing is you're splitting your stitches in half you're knitting one side and then pulling that needle out and then knitting the other side and that'll make more sense once you see it so we're gonna start knitting now okay so it's been a few hours since i last talked to you and i knit one of the mittens already just because then i could show you which part i was at like as i went along so yeah the first mitten is already done just a little tip for knitting anything with a pair you want to make sure that you have enough yarn for both of them you can make one and then weigh the amount of yarn that you have left and see if that's going to be enough and that's just if you were wondering if you had to go back to the yarn store or not i'm starting on my us 11 or 8 millimeter needles i'm going to cast on 21 stitches and eventually I'm going to be working with 20 stitches, but I always cast on an extra for when I join in the round. So I cast it on 21 stitches, and now I'm going to split the stitches in half, but on the right needle, I'm going to keep that extra one. So between the 11th and 12th stitch, I'm just going to pull my cord through, and now I have my stitches split on my needles. So I'm going to have 11 on my right needle and 10 on my left needle. We are not connected in the round yet. So with the extra stitch, I'm just going to slip it from the right needle to the left needle. Then I pull my right needle out, rotate it clockwise. To get everything connected, we're just going to knit the slip stitch and then the first stitch on the left needle. And if you want to remember which side is your beginning side, you can put a stitch marker. Or what I do is I normally just look at which side the tail from the original cast on is coming from. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to put in a stitch marker. And now we're just going to do a one by one rib. Since we knit the first stitch, the next stitch is going to be a purl stitch. Then we're just going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and then... For this specific number of stitches, anything divisible by four, your last stitch on the needle is going to be a purl stitch. So now I knit all of the stitches on my top needle, or I'm also going to refer to this as the front needle, but that'll make more sense as we do more rows. Then I'm going to pull my cord, and then I'm going to slide the rest of my stitches onto that other needle. Then we're going to slide the top needle out. rotate clockwise and then we're going to start knitting the other half of the stitches so we're starting with a knit stitch because we just ended with a purl stitch 
And just a tip, you want to make sure when you go around these corners that you're pulling pretty tight or else sometimes there can be a little gap in that area. And then I'm just going to continue my one by one rib. And like the last half of the stitches, we're ending on a purl stitch. I'm now back at that stitch marker, so I just did my first row. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull my cord and then put the rest of the stitches on the other needle. Pull the top needle out. Rotate clockwise. And then we're starting a new row, so we're just going to do another one by one rib. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that stitch marker was getting really annoying, so I'm just going to put it on the side that signifies a new row. And I'll show the magic loop one more time. So I just knit that first half of the stitches. Now I'm going to pull my cord. Put the other half of the stitches on my other needle, the empty needle. I'm going to pull the top needle out, rotate my work clockwise, and start knitting my one by one rib again. And I'll link a few more in depth tutorials down below for you guys to check out if you need a little bit of extra help with the magic loop. And we're going to do this for 10 rows total, so this is a good time to grab your notebook and start doing some tallies. It's just going to be 10 rows of a one by one rib. So I will come back to you once I've done my 10 rows. I was talking about this yarn in another video. I think it was the winter fashion trends video. And I was saying that I bought this yarn an entire year ago. I remember that I made some mittens for my mom for Christmas last year. And I bought this yarn to make some mittens for myself. But I never got around to it and I didn't want to use it for anything else. I feel like whenever I buy yarn that I really like, I kind of will just keep it. And I don't want to use it because I don't know. I just feel like I don't want to mess it up. So I always kind of just keep nicer yarn on my shelf but i am trying to get better at using what i have so we're starting with this yarn and what i was saying in my winter fashion video is that i really like cobalt blue accessories so this is perfect maybe i'll get some more of this yarn and make a little hat okay i just finished the ribbing if you wanted the ribbing to be longer or shorter you can adjust that here so the wrist part is done now we're gonna knit a stock knit stitch which is all knit stitches i think if you're a beginner this can be a little bit confusing this is actually something that i want to talk about really quick because it's one of the most common mistakes for beginners I think just from like things people have asked me over dms or like comments on my videos but when you're knitting in the round in the stock knit you're only doing knit stitches because you're just building rows where if you were knitting flat you would knit one side purl one side so I think where people get a little bit tripped up is in the round when you come to a new row you start doing purls but really you're only doing knit stitches because you're just building on top of the row that you're already on. If you're doing the stock knit in the round, you're only doing knit stitches. So now we're going to go into the stock knit, and this is when we switch our needles to US 15 needles. I have interchangeable needles, but if you don't have interchangeable needles, just start knitting with your US 15 needles and everything should be fine. So now we're at this part of the mitten, and it's just going to be knitting six rows, stock knit. So I'm going to knit my six rows, and then I'll come back to you and show you what to do next. I'm sitting on the floor in this corner because I don't have like a good overhead filming setup so I have to film on the ground. So I did my six stock knit rows so now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. So as you can see this part will increase out a little bit so that's what we're going to do for the next step. We're just going to increase a little bit for the thumb because if you see my hand you see that my thumb goes outwards obviously that's part of your anatomy so you want a little bit of extra room for your thumb to move so you're not like so constricted. So that's why we do a little bit of increases for the thumb. Grab two stitch markers because you're going to need them for the next step. Okay so I did my six stock knit rows and the next row I'm just going to start like normal. I'm going to knit all of the stitches on my front needle. Then I switch to the back needle using the magic loop method. And this is where I'm going to place my first marker. At this point, I'm going to do an increase called a make one right. So first, I pick up this bar in between my stitches with my right needle. Then with the left needle, I'm going to insert it in from back to front. And then I'm going to knit through the front of that stitch. So I just created a whole new stitch 
and it's now on my right needle. Then I'm just going to knit the next stitch. Then at this point, I'm going to do something called a make one left. So again, I'm going to pick up that bar in between the stitches. Instead of picking it up from back to front, I'm going to pick it up from front to back. And then I just knit through the back of that loop. And I just created another stitch. I will link some videos for make one rights and make one lefts down below if you want to watch it a little bit more in depth. And here is where I'm going to place my next stitch marker. And these stitch markers kind of signify our increased section, if that makes sense. And if you want a visual on that, here is the thumb of my mitten. All the make one rights are leaning right and all the make one lefts are leaning left. So it's creating just a little section for our thumb. This is where the magic loop can get a little messy because I don't always split my stitches in half, but it's okay. I'm just going to not worry about it for a little bit while we do our increases. So I'm just going to finish up the rest of my row just knitting like normal. Then I'm going to switch my needles using the magic loop. And now we're on the next row and I'm just going to knit all the way up until that first stitch marker. Then I'm going to do the magic loop again. And then here is where we're going to do another make one right. So always to the left of that first stitch marker, I'm going to make one right. Then I'm going to knit the next three stitches. And then right before I slip the second marker, I'm going to do a make one left. So I'm only going to be doing my increases in between the stitch markers. I'm going to put up a little diagram so you can visualize this a little bit easier. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do increase rows until I have nine stitches in between my stitch markers. So that should be four increase rows. Okay, we are cruising through this. I'm so proud of you. Look at you go. Now we've done our little thumb increases. And for the next part, we're actually going to be working the rest of the mitten before we do the thumb. So now all of those stitches that we just casted on, we're actually going to tie them off temporarily. And then we're going to connect it back together and knit in the round. So now I'm going to grab my scrap yarn and tapestry needle. Now I'm going to tie off all of the stitches that are in between the stitch markers. To do that, I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and feed it through all of those stitches. Then I like to tie it in a little bow just so it doesn't come off. Now I just knit up until I reach those stitches and then I can slip those all off of my needle. And they're all secured by the scrap yarn so you don't have to worry about them falling. So now I'm going to create the thumb hole by closing this up but I want to have a little bit of extra room for the thumb so I'm going to cast on one extra stitch and I'm just going to do kind of like a long tail cast on here. Then I'm going to switch my needles and then continue knitting. And now I have 21 stitches. I have the original 20 plus the one that I just casted on. And just a tip, when you come back around to the casted on stitch, it's going to be very loose. So you might just need to even out the tension by loosening the stitches to the left because those ones get really tight. That's just a little tip in my experience. And I kind of just use a tapestry needle for this. Now it's not as loose and you can continue knitting. And this part's nice because we can kind of just mindlessly knit maybe throw on a podcast or a TV show, because we're going to be knitting 12 rows of this. We're just working on this part of the mitten. So 12 rows of stock net, and then we'll close up the mitten. Say hi to Puffer Snoopy. Okay, so now I just get to sit here and knit 12 rows, which shouldn't take me that long, but we'll see. I'm just going to keep track in my head, I guess. I feel like all of my projects have mismatched rows because I can't count. I'm so excited for these mittens. I'm gonna wear the absolute heck out of them until I can't anymore.
bought myself a coffee today. My current coffee fixation right now is a hazelnut latte. So I finished all of my rows. Now it's time to close up this top. Also, I guess this is where you could cast off if you wanted to do a fingerless glove. And this next part is where I kind of start decreasing randomly. It's not super structured, I guess, but pretty much all I do now is I just decrease on both sides for each row and then I cut my yarn and weave it through. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, if anyone was wondering, this ended up being around three and a half inches. So now, like I was saying, I'm going to do a few decrease rows. So I'm going to split my stitches in half on my needles. Again, we have an odd number, so I'm just going to put like 11 on the front needle and then 10 on the back needle. At the beginning of this row, I'm going to start it with a slip slip knit decrease. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want that decrease to lean to the left or inwards, just because that's how your hand is shaped. So to slip slip knit, I make sure that my yarn is in the back. Then I slip the first stitch knit wise, the second stitch purl wise. Then with my left needle, I'm going to insert it through the front of those two loops. Then I'm going to take my yarn and just knit them. And that was my slip slip knit decrease. And this part is not super organized. This is kind of where I start just making up decreases, but I think I have it organized in a way that'll make sense. So now I'm just gonna knit all the way to the end of my row. Then I switch my needles. And then here again, we're gonna do another slip slip knit decrease. And then I'm going to continue knitting until there's two stitches left on my needle. For the last two stitches on this row, I'm just going to knit them together, aka a knit two together decrease. Again, this is really random. This is just how I did it. So for this row, we technically did three decreases. Now we're just going to switch our needles again. So now for this row, we're starting on the first half of the stitches. And we're just going to knit on the front needle until we have two stitches left, and then we're going to knit those last two together. Then we're going to switch our needles, and I'm really sorry about this next part because I didn't realize I was out of frame. But basically I just did the same thing, so I knit all of the stitches until there was two stitches left, and then I knit those two together. So that was my second decrease row. And I just did two decreases. Okay, so this is going to be my last decrease row. So for this row, I'm going to, again, start with a slip slip knit. Then I'm going to knit the rest of the stitches. Flip my needles. Then for the other half of the stitches, I'm going to start with a slip slip knit again. and then knit the rest of the stitches. If you look, now we have a shape that's pointing inwards instead of it kind of going all over the place. So that is why I do my decreases that way. So now we're just gonna tie these off. So I'm gonna cut my yarn and I'm gonna leave a bit of a longer tail. And then with the tapestry needle, starting with the stitch that's across from the stitch that your yarn is coming from, Start there and weave that end through all of the stitches on your needles. And then once they're all secured, slide your needles off. And then slowly pull it closed. And then I also like to pull it through the top there so that the tail is on the inside. And that is how I finished the top. So now we're starting to really look like a mitten. Now we have a thumbless mitten. So this next part, we're just going to be working on the thumb. So do you remember these nine stitches that we tied off? So now we're going to put these back on our needle, but also we're going to pick up three stitches. I know that we only cast it on one stitch when we were closing this hole before, but the reason why we're going to pick up three stitches here is because we're going to knit them together with the stitch that's already live, I guess you could call it, because sometimes when you pick up stitches, they can leave holes. And then pretty much after that, we're doing 
like a similar thing to the rest of the mitten except it's going to be very small obviously because it's the thumb so this is the part where you really need to utilize the magic loop method so let's do the thumb okay so like i was saying i'm just going to put those nine stitches that i tied off earlier back onto my needles they're all now on my needle so i can pull out my scrap yarn so now for the magic loop, I'm going to split these stitches in half, but obviously we have an odd number, so it's not going to be evenly in half. So right now I'm completely detached from my ball of yarn, so I'm going to grab the yarn to start knitting again. So in the space that I casted on one stitch before, which is above all of those stitches that we just put back on my needles, in this space is where I'm going to pick up three stitches. And if you wanted to separate these so you know which ones are the picked up stitches and then which ones are the live stitches, then I would just place a stitch marker on each side of the stitches that you pick up. So now I'm just going to knit all the way up until one stitch before the first stitch marker. Here what I did is I isolated the five stitches that we're going to be focused on for this row specifically. So I have one live stitch, three picked up stitches, and then another live stitch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my stitch marker. Then with my live stitch and my picked up stitch, I'm going to do a slip slip knit decrease. And your loop for your picked up stitch will be a little bit loose because that's where the yarn tail is coming from. Don't worry about that. You can fix that later by just tightening it and weaving it in. Then we're going to knit the next stitch, which is just the stitch that we originally casted on. So we want to keep that there. And again, here we have a picked up stitch and a live stitch. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker. And then I'm just going to do a knit two together decrease. And of course you could just pick up that one that you casted on originally. This is just the method that I usually use to kind of close up holes while picking up stitches. Once we've knit those two together, we're now at the beginning of our row again. So by decreasing, we just got rid of those two extra stitches that we picked up. And we now have 10 stitches, so if we did want to split these in half for the magic loop, we can do that. And from here, we're just going to be doing some stock knit rows. I did 9 stock knit rows for the thumb. Then after those 9 rows, I'm going to close up the thumb. To close up the thumb, all I did was every other stitch I did a decrease. So I knit one, then I knit two together, knit one, knit two together, until I had six stitches left. Then I did the same thing that I did before when I closed up the top of the mitten. I just cut my yarn and then weaved that tail through all of the stitches on my needle, slipped my needle out, and then pulled tightly. Now all I have to do is weave in the ends, and I'm just going to show you a quick little tip for keeping those ends in place. I recently learned this, but you can use a felting needle to felt your ends in place. So I'm going to link a tutorial for that down below because someone else will do a better job at explaining it than me because I just learned it. But basically you felt the wool together, so it kind of locks it into place so that end doesn't pop out after a while. It'll kind of just keep it glued there. Basically, I just take this felting needle and stab the yarn a bunch up against the main part of my work just to lock it into place. And here are my mittens. They turned out so good! Okay, we're no longer crouched on the floor, but it's time for the reveal. So, drumroll. Here they are. I love them so much. They're so soft. They look a little goofy because I'm not wearing a jacket. 
I love them so much and I'm gonna be wearing these all winter long. I think the color works in my wardrobe pretty well. Again, this is the Malabrigo Rusty Yarn in the color Matisse Blue. This was how much was left over. And since you're able to try on mittens as you go, the way that these mittens are constructed makes them super adjustable. So if you wanted to make them longer or shorter, just adjust the amount of rows that you do here. Also, you can adjust the amount of rows for your thumb. I'll just add all of the final measurements here so you guys can look at that. I would say this would be like a women's medium, maybe. Maybe bigger than that, I don't know. I have pretty long fingers, so. so I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make these mittens, and hopefully you were able to recreate them yourself. I just think they're such a winter staple, and this yarn in particular is so soft, and the chunky mittens work up so quickly because of the super bulky yarn, but I think if you're focused, you can get them done in a couple hours. Again, I'll have the supplies that I used linked in the description. If you followed along or enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, and make sure you subscribe so you can get notifications when I post more knitting tutorials. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!